All right, get your pencils ready. We're going to find the inverse of a function. Okay, so here's our function, the f of x. And the inverse is going to be denoted like this with a superscript of a negative 1. And what you need to know about an inverse is that all of your y's will become x's, and all of your x's will become y's. So let me rewrite this here. Instead of f of x equals, we know that we can write y equals. And that's going to be 5x plus 2 over x minus 7. OK, so to get the inverse, remember, we're going to switch all of our x's with y's and all of our y's with x's. So instead of y on the left, it's going to be x equals. Instead of 5x plus 2, it's going to be 5y plus 2 over, instead of x minus 7, it's going to be y minus 7. OK, notice I used the different colors to show that my y here became an x, my x here became a y, and then my x here became a y. OK, that's going to help me see it. Now, this is pretty much an inverse, but I need to solve for the y. I need to get the y by itself. So I want all my y's on the same side. And right now, you might say, oh, they are on the same side. But one of them's in the top, one of them's in the bottom. I want one singular y. So what I have to do is I have to get rid of my fractions. And to get rid of this y minus 7 in the denominator, I am going to multiply times y minus 7. OK, those will cancel out. I will have nothing in the denominator. But if I multiply the right-hand side times y minus 7, guess what I have to do? I have to multiply the left-hand side times y minus 7. OK, let's see where we are now. We are, let me go to purple. We are at y minus 7 times x equals 5y plus 2. OK, now I want to get all my y's on the same side. And I'm going to move this term, this 5y. But when I move it to the left, I can't really combine it the way that this is right now. So what I need to do is I need to distribute the x. OK, I'm going to distribute the x. That way, this y will kind of be unlocked. And it'll be in a term where I can put it together with the 5y. OK, let's see what that looks like. Uh, x times y is xy, minus 7 times x is 7x. OK, and that equals 5y plus 2. Right side drops down. Now, let's move all my y terms to the left. I don't want y's on the right, so I'm going to subtract 5y on both sides. And then I'm not going to want this term right here, this minus 7x on the left. So let's move that. We can do that in the same step. Uh, to get rid of a minus 7x, we're going to do a plus 7x on both sides. OK. Let's go ahead and clean this up and see what we have now. xy minus 5y, that comes down. xy minus 5y. Notice that this minus 7x plus 7x canceled out. And on the right-hand side, I have 2 plus 7x, and I can't combine those, so I'll just write it as 2 plus 7x. OK, now, I would like to put these two together if I can, but unfortunately, I can't. So to get the y out of there, I need to factor it out, OK, like the greatest common factor. And what I can do is I can factor a y out of both terms. So here's my y on the outside. And I will be left with, after I factor the y out, I'll be left with x minus 5. OK, and I did that so I can get a singular y. If you want to check to make sure it's the same thing, you could say that, oh, well, y times x is yx. y times negative 5 is negative 5y. All right, and the reason that I did that is because now I can get the y by itself. One more step. Let's divide both sides. Let's divide out this x minus 5. And you can see that these two cancel. 
and I'll divide this side by x minus 5. Okay, so here's what I have. I'll bring it up here. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, I have y, and on the right-hand side, I have 2 plus 7x over x minus 5. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it just like that. I don't need to try to do anything else to this fraction on the right, this rational expression. And that is my inverse. Okay, so here's my answer. The inverse of x equals 2 plus 7x over x minus 5. And you can leave it like that. I always put a box around my answer. And... Smiley face.